Hi Juan, how are you doing? Hi Insemil, good to see you. So it's been a while, I was wondering what have you been up to lately? Yeah, yeah, I've been thinking about our next project and I wanted to show you some of the ideas that I've been sketching. Can you see the, can you see the whiteboard in the back? The drawing that I did over there? Uh, it's, it's a bit hard to see. How about we switch to blended whiteboard instead? Oh, yeah, yeah, great idea. Hi, and welcome to our talk. I am Jens Mil Grønbæk. I am Juan Sanchez Esquivel. And this work is a collaboration between co-authors from Aarhus University, the University of Melbourne and Lancaster University. With mixed reality, we can blend people's whiteboards across spaces to support remote collaboration. This enables users to take advantage of the whiteboard's physicality, such as the nonverbal cues for turn-taking while sketching, or the easy managing of shared attention and pointing to content. At the same time, we may also want to exploit the reconfigurability of virtual whiteboards, like this example here, where you see the users switching from working side by side to working through the whiteboard, enabling a joint form of cooperation on the same sketch. But combining physicality and reconfigurability creates tension. In our paper, we identify three aspects to unpack this tension. Our physical bodies can naturally coordinate the turn taking when we sketch, but sometimes bodies might also be in the way of each other. Virtual whiteboards, on the other hand, enable a joint cooperation, but without the real bodies, the turn taking then becomes harder. In front of a real whiteboard, we can easily monitor the shared attention and use our physical bodies to point and reference content. But that same physical whiteboard can also be too inflexible for splitting up and working individually. With the infinite canvases and individual controls of virtual whiteboards, we can more flexibly coordinate and switch between these different forms of work. But how can we use mixed reality to reconcile these tensions? To address this tension, we introduce Blended Whiteboard. Blended Whiteboard supports a unique collaboration style where users can interact with the physical whiteboard while together as virtual avatars. They can also reconfigure the blended space by changing the avatar orientation and spacing or panning and zooming the whiteboard content, all without losing the physical frame of reference. Users interact with the system by sketching with the stylus, changing avatar formations via a hand menu and navigating the whiteboard content via gestures. To combine physical and virtual whiteboard capabilities in a single system, Blended Whiteboard implements three core design principles. The first principle is to support dynamic whiteboarding by providing multiple facing formations. With blended whiteboard, Alice and Bob can brainstorm while next to each other with easy attention switching between person and task. But they can also switch from working side by side to working through the whiteboard. When in front of each other, it's easier to work on the same sketch and monitor each other's actions. The second principle is that content can be navigated through either shared or individual control. Alice and Bob's local surfaces work as physical viewports into an infinite canvas. When they cooperate closely, Alice and Bob can pan the canvas and see changes synchronized across views. But when they work independently, they should be able to navigate individually. To do so, Alice can pan her viewport. This does not affect Bob's content view, but instead it increases distance between their avatars, allowing them to work on independent surfaces. The third principle is that surfaces can be reconfigured, but also easily reversed to the original configuration. While they work independently, Alice can zoom in her viewport on details of the content. Instead of disrupting Bob's view, it changes the relative scaling of avatars. These scale disparities can provide awareness cues, like showing Bob that Alice is working on a detail, but they also compromise the physicality needed for natural conversation. To resolve this tension, users can tap to join their partner's viewport. This interaction enables Alice and Bob to snap back to reality with physically aligned whiteboards and avatars at eye level. So, to summarize, the blended whiteboard principles address the tension by 1. 
letting users switch between side-by-side -side and face-to-face -to, -face to support both naturally coordinated turn-taking and joint cooperation. Two, dual mode navigation, which enables both managing attention through shared controls and cooperation through individual controls. And three, via reversible transitions, where users can flexibly coordinate transition into individual work, but also easily revert to physically natural communication for group work. One of the interactions you just saw warrants a bit more explanation. Recall the moment where Alice and Bob make a smooth transition from working side by side to working face to face together on blended whiteboard. They suddenly view each other through the whiteboard, as if working on a transparent board, but the whiteboard content still remains with the correct orientation for both users. So how do we do this? Doing this, in mixed reality, requires us to do a few tricks. When the transition is triggered, it initiates an animation where the avatar is floating through the whiteboard while rotating to the right orientation on the other side. During this transition, the partner's avatar is also mirrored such that its body follows the local user's orientation of content, allowing for correct spatial referencing when pointing. It is different from virtual teleportation in that the user cannot teleport themselves in their own physical space, but they can accept the illusion that the partner's avatar can teleport. This illusion is important because it helps users to accept the repositioning of the avatars, even though the movement is not physically possible. We conducted a user study to gain insights on questions related to blended whiteboard design principles. The study was divided into two parts. The first part focused on comparing the two primary face informations and two whiteboard panning modes. We combined them, two and two, into four conditions covering the different combinations and asked participants to rate each condition in terms of their support for a collaborative affinity diagramming task. The second part was an exploratory task where we focused on identifying novel usage patterns by letting participants use our full system for doing a whiteboard task of their own choosing. The data collection involved questionnaires following each condition for comparison and observations during the exploratory task, followed by a semi-structured focus group interview. We will now summarize the key findings from the study. From the comparison, we found that most participants favored working face-to-face -face compared to side-by-side -side with affinity diagramming. The main reasons being that it avoided avatar collisions and disruptions to the task flow. Most pairs experienced these collisions when side-by-side. -side. Participants also appreciated the improved awareness of the partner's avatar when face-to-face because when the avatar is behind the whiteboard, it is more often within the user's field of view. Regarding the whiteboard navigation, it was clear that the two modes supported different collaboration dynamics. Recall that the canvas panning mode is shared, affecting both users' view, whereas viewport panning is for individual navigation. The pairs that appreciated the shared panning tended to have more turn-taking whereas the pairs that favored the viewport panning would highlight that shared panning tended to cause conflicts. That is, when participants did not communicate what their intent to start panning was. During the self-selected task, we saw a wide variety of interactions with our system. Depending on the nature of their task, they would use it in vastly different ways. For instance, one pair needed to sketch a brain visualization together with a lot of detail and decided to switch to face-to-face -to -face and use the viewport panning and zoom in frequently. Another pair decided to use it more like a real whiteboard, working side by side to plan a trip for their friends. One partner was in charge of writing and annotating their plan while the other was taking a step back and making verbal comments from a distance. Now, going back to the principles of blended whiteboard, we come to see that there are two important implications coming out of this research. Firstly, the combinations of avatar face informations and whiteboard navigation modes serve different kinds of whiteboard tasks. When users can transition between different combinations, it allows users to appropriate the system for the task at hand. Secondly, 
The ability to transition between configurations comes with the cost that users must mentally adapt to changes in the blended space. To ease this interaction, transitions should be reversible, providing users with a quick access to regain a sense of physicality. In summary, our work makes the following contributions to research on distributed mixed reality collaboration. A theoretical lens for understanding the tension between physicality and reconfigurability. The Noble Blended Whiteboard System. Three design principles aim to reconcile the tension through the design of mixed reality systems for distributed collaboration.